We got some interesting new leaks for Assassin's Creed Codename Red, a release month leak for a big PlayStation game. We might get a remake of a big RPG, and there's more news to go over, so thanks always for joining the weekly news roundup video. Let's start with a next-gen only game that is coming to PS4 and Xbox One. Like, I was kind of surprised when I saw this news, but during EA's investor call, they noted that Star Wars Jedi Survivor is in the early stage of development for PS4 and Xbox One. Like on one end, sure great that more people get to enjoy one of my favorite games of 2023, but it's also kind of disappointing as I really thought they made Jedi Survivor with the newer platforms in mind, but no. It can seemingly run on 10 year old hardware as well. Now maybe a bit of a conspiracy, but I really wonder if this was always the plan. Like if that was the case, then why only start developing those versions now and not immediately have them out when the game released the first time? Why not announce it from the start that you're also bringing it to PS4 and Xbox One so more people can care about it like they did with Hogwarts Legacy, even though they also released those older gen versions way later. And I wish re Respawn good luck, because Jedi Survivor even has issues running on PS5 and Xbox Series, so with them saying that additional performance improvements for PC, PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X and S remain a top priority at Respawn, and the team will share more information as soon as the next update is ready. Like it's still far from fixed three months later and they now want to have it run on platforms that are way worse. Now my theory is that the game just did not sell as well as EA had hoped, so that's why they're making these old gen versions as well. But yeah, let's hope that we get more real next gen only games very soon. Of course, curious to hear your take in the comments. They, by the way, also said that obviously there will be a third game. Like, they're going to invest more into this franchise. October looks to be the most crowded month of the year with Lords of the Fallen, Assassin's Creed Mirage, Alan Wake 2, Forza Motorsport, Spider Man 2, Super Mario Wonder, City Skylines 2, Metal Gear Remastered Collection, Alone in the Dark. <gasps> And seems like Helldivers 2 will try to fit in there as well, according to a new leak from Insider Gaming. Like, they got their hands on a mission briefing from a Sony partnership program that mentions that, of course, this was not supposed to be publicly known. And if this is true, like, I don't get why Sony would put this PlayStation 5 console exclusive game next to Spider-Man 2. Like, why not put it in November or December? You're only launching a few games a year and then you're dropping them both in the same month. And it's kind of weird, I've said it before, but why is everyone avoiding November? Usually it's super busy. I would not be surprised, by the way, if the Red Dead Redemption Remastered launches there. But yeah, let's hope that Helldivers 2 avoids the crowded October, as I would love to give it a shot. I think it looks really awesome, but I don't think I will have the time in October. Overall, also not seeing a lot of hype for the game, so it's better for them to put it out later, I think. And I also would not be surprised if some other games I mentioned move out of that October window. Maybe weird to already say it, but the October-November window of next year is already looking pretty crazy with the new Nintendo Switch, now rumored for that time with an 8-inch LCD display, sadly no OLED, 512 gig of internal storage, but it's kind of uncertain if it will have backwards compatibility. We also know that Sony is planning a PS5 Pro around that time that hopefully makes 4K 60fps a given and also has improved ray tracing. And Assassin's Creed Codename Red is planned for a launch at the end of 2024 as well. And we got some new leaks on that and other news to go over. Of course, if you like these news round of videos, a like would really be appreciated. And subscribe because I post one of these every Sunday. Like we've been slowly seeing leaks for Assassin's Creed Codename Red even though we still only have this short teaser for the game where we likely see the female shinobi character while the game will also have a male samurai who's an african refugee according to tom henderson so both characters are not copies of each other which is very interesting and i remember french youtuber jonathan saying that we can likely play both of them while going through the game and that playing one or the other will have different interactions with certain characters, which of course is cool. So Codename Red is of course not going to be the final name, and now we got a since deleted post on Reddit saying that the game was internally renamed to Assassin's Creed Edo or Idol. Of course, massive grain of salt, this was from a so-called playtester on 4chan, but I do think it's kind of a weird name to predict. Edo would be 1603 to 1867, a time that Japan was ruled by the Tokugawa Shogunate and was overall peaceful so it might be a weird setting for an Assassin's Creed game but 
I still wanted to throw the rumor out there. Now, a known insider on Reset Era was saying that Assassin's Creed Red will be the last of the Origins formula. And my interpretation of that is that it means that it will be the final big game that is kind of an iteration of what Origins started. So maybe not that big of a leap, but they're just looking at the blueprint from Origins, Odyssey and Valhalla and applying that to Japan, which I think makes sense. But of course, it's also the first next-gen only Assassin's Creed. So maybe you expect it a bit more than that. Like Ubisoft is not going to stop making Assassin's Creed RPGs after Red. They actually announced that Ubisoft Quebec that did Odyssey will be in charge of all these RPG games moving forward. So also after this Japan game is out. So yeah, I think this rumor basically means that if you've played Origins Odyssey Valhalla, Red will likely be very familiar. Although once again, I'm curious to hear what you think the last of the Origins formula might mean. And now last week in the Sunday video, I talked about how Immortals Phoenix Rising 2 has been cancelled. And since then, Steven Totillo chimed in saying that while Immortals 2's focus on Polynesian Gods was promising and being handled well, it sounds like getting AC Red done is the priority at the Quebec City studio. And also he followed up saying that the expectation from people I spoke to close to Ubisoft was that Red could use more people, as does Hexe, as Ubisoft bets on AC for its future. Like, it makes business sense to focus on Red and making sure that that is the best as it possibly can be, but it's just sad that it has to be at the cost of a fun-sounding Immortal sequel and if you want to learn more of course check out my previous Sunday video via the link in the description. Now what also makes business sense is doing more with Elder Scrolls like we know of course that a big new game is coming but they will only really start working on that in full force after Starfield is out. With Microsoft lawyers saying that the game is expected in 2026 well before that it seems like we might be getting an Oblivion remake by Virtuos Games that is now also doing the Metal Gear Solid Remastered Collection. Of course, also with this one, take it with a grain of salt, but a former employee of Virtuos Games posted this message on Reddit that they now deleted, talking about Project Altar, which the remaster remake for Oblivion, which should be done in Unreal Engine 5 in combination with the old Oblivion engine. I can't remember like hearing about combining two engines before, but okay. And also that it should be launching at the end of next year or early 2025 like end of 2024 doesn't make a lot of sense because microsoft would have avowed around that time which is kind of similar and yeah them still not sure if it's going to be a remaster or remake kind of makes me think that this is 2025 at the earliest if it's of course true at all but yeah, it would be smart to remake a huge RPG like this that a lot of the newer generation of people has not played yet. And there's also this Sky Oblivion fan project where they are remaking the game in the Skyrim engine. And that all shows that a ton of people want this. Although it is also kind of a strange situation that we will then have that fan project and the official Oblivion remake if the rumors are true. Why not like join forces then? But yeah, it's super smart for Microsoft to do more with the series instead of only launching Elder Scrolls Online updates. And speaking of Xbox, they plan to go big at Gamescom with their biggest booth ever. And you can play some pretty awesome games there like Stalker 2 for the first time, Payday 3 is playable, Armored Core, the Phantom Liberty DLC for Cyberpunk, and they will also have theater presentations for Starfield and Forza. Sure, it would have been cool to have Starfield playable, but they're of course like full focused on launching the game a few weeks later and that of course has way more priority. And I'm not sure if you know, but Gamescom is like huge. Tens of thousands of people go there. So when they say biggest booth ever, you think, awesome, I want to play some games. But then you read that they only have 150 stations. So that's not a lot of people that can play at the same time. While the theater with 300 people is a bit better. And I'll, by the way, be going to Gamescom this year. It has been a while, so I'm really excited. So we'll, of course, also do a live reaction for the opening night live show with Jeff Keighley, which on Tuesday, August 22nd. And then the days after that, I will be at the event. So hopefully uh, checking some cool things out. I will keep you posted of course here. And this coming week we'll have more Baldur's Gate 3 content for if you're playing that on PC with of course the PlayStation 5 launch being on September 6th. There's also another open world game coming out this week. Totally expect a video on that. And I might have some Assassin's Creed content that I'm excited about as well. And of course a Sunday video which is a special one actually at the end of this week. So lots of cool stuff. So subscribe to not miss it. A like would of course really help me out. And you can check out last week's news round of video going over that cancelled Ubisoft game. And way way more by clicking on the screen. I will speak to you very soon. Goodbye.